Outlines and borders look really similar at first. Heck, their syntax is even almost exactly the same. Look at this. Now I use outlines quite often in my videos and whenever I do, I get asked about the difference between using an outline and using a border. So in this video, we're breaking down the differences from the really big and obvious ones to some of the more subtle ones. And at the end, we're also gonna look at a fun use case for outlines that doesn't involve focus states because that's usually where you see them used. All right, borders versus outlines. We are here in uh, CodePen. I was gonna say VS Code, but we are in CodePen. And I'm in here because it's a nice quick little example and I've linked it down below. So you can jump in here and play around with it while I do this or after the fact, if you would like to. So the very big one is that borders are part of the box model, whereas outlines are not. And what does this mean? Well, it means that borders take up space on an element, which is kind of interesting. But if I go here on my border and you can see they both look almost the same. Now there's one really subtle difference. I don't know if you can notice it. Uh, but let's make this 200 pixels. Let's make it just gigantic. And well, you can see it's, it's changed the layout of my site. And it's had a big influence on things because that 200 pixels is taking up room on everything. Whereas if I come on the outline and I say 200 pixels, nothing is gonna move. It just takes up visual space, but it's not actually having any layout implications whatsoever. So this is probably the biggest difference between the two of them. Um, and it has a lot of implications actually. Um, on how they work, obviously. Um, and you can think of outlines, this is like when you put a box shadow on something. If you put a shadow on something, that shadow doesn't influence the page at all. Same thing with an outline. It's painted, it's drawn there, but it's not influencing the layout at all. And this is actually the reason that I recommend using outline instead of borders if you're doing any de uh, debugging. So if you have layout issues, you have over scroll stuff that you don't, you, know, you don't know why things are causing some horizontal scrolling, stuff like that. Uh, outlines is perfect for that and I actually have a video where I talk just about that and how we can use outlines for debugging if you're interested in it. Now another interesting thing just since we're on the topic of the box model is actually here that if you look at the outline it's actually a little bit further out um, and that's because the outline is drawn outside of the border. So if I add uh, here in border, border of one pixel solid blue let's say, um, you know, the outline is on the outside of that. And so the the outline is being drawn on the outside of my, my border box. So if you look at these two, and it's really, really subtle, let's, let's see, see if I do a 20 on this one, if we can see it a little bit clearer. Um, but there you go, you can see this is on the outside, whereas this is more on the inside of the element itself. Um, so there is a difference there also on how, it, like where it's being drawn. So that can influence things depending on how you set up your padding and other things like that along the way. Uh, but when it's really small, it's a very subtle difference. But when you have really big numbers, it can be pretty big. Anyway, another important thing with borders is you can control parts individually, right? So I can say that my border is, uh, or first of all, I could just say border bottom here if I wanted to, border bottom. And I could only have a border on my bottom instead of on all the sides. Or if you have a border on all the sides, I could say that my border left uh, color is blue. And I could say that my border right width is 20 pixels. And just like that, we can switch things around on my borders and control them individually. And this is always something cool that I think people don't often take advantage of, and I probably don't either. Um, but it's kind of cool that you can pick and choose what you want. The outline is a shorthand for, uh, but it's not a shorthand for the different sides. So like, you know, if you did a border, just a border uh, left like this, that's a shorthand for like the color, the border left color, border width, border left width, border, all you know, all the border left stuff. Um, there is no outline left, outline right. So like if I came on here and I said outline left, nothing's gonna happen. It just doesn't show up because it's an invalid property. Uh, so outlines, it's all or nothing. And you can't individually control the different parts of an outline, which is a bit of a shame because I think it would be kind of fun to be able to, but it is what it is. Uh, another really, this is probably the thing that bugs me the most about outlines, um, as much as it's nice to be able to control the different parts of it, another thing that is super useful is uh, that we can do things like border radius. And as the name implies on the border radius, it will work on a border, uh, border radius. And let's just do something big enough that we can see it. Um, and we get nice round corners. If I come on my outline and I say uh, border radius, of 10 pixels, well, nothing's gonna change. And what's even more annoying is we have a background color on here, uh, background color of red, just so we can see it really easily. You'll actually get the round corners, but the outline is not rounding. And this can be annoying if you, you're putting a custom outline on something, but you have round buttons and you wanna focus state with an outline, um, that can look a little bit weird. So I, I do think that's one of my biggest pet peeves with 
uh, outlines is that you can't have the round corners on them. And an even bigger pet peeve is that there is a way to do it because the new Chrome default focus state um, has an outline, right? And that focus state's outline is actually does have round corners. They're not very round, um, but they are a little bit rounded and we can't do it. And that darn browser defaults doing stuff that we can't do. <laughs> um, actually, the new Chrome one's nice too because it can inverse colors. And there, for the um, outline color, there actually is an inverse color that should work, but I haven't, I've tried it in a few places and I never actually saw it work. Um, just so you know, so you can see that like invalidated it here. Um, so I've tried in Firefox and in Chrome anyway, and it does nothing. So sadly, it seems like it's out of the picture for now. So yeah, those are the some of the differences, but just because we can't have wrong corners doesn't mean that outlines don't have a superpower because they have one of the coolest superpowers in the world. And actually, let's put a background color back on here. Let's say a background of, um, I don't know, I'm just gonna choose a dark color and maybe a color white so we can see it. Um, and then I'm gonna make this black as well. So you get a black uh, outline and you go, well, Kevin, why would you wanna do that? Or a 333, three, three, just to keep it consistent. We can't even see it. And this is the superpower of all superpowers, as far as I'm concerned. I love this one so, so, so much, um, which is my outline offset. And let's say three pixels. And just like that, look at that. It, it's saying that we wanna offset everything by three pixels. So it's pulling it away by three pixels. And you get this nice little thing like that. And that's super cool. Um, there's ways of doing something like this with shadows and stuff to get like a double border effect, but it's so nice. And you know, I am using pixels for all this just really fast. If this was production, I would definitely be using um, M and Rem. Um, and I'd probably be using M for this. So if the font size changed, the proportions of stuff would change, but just a little side note there. Um, so you can make this as big or as small as you want because outlines don't affect your layout. So you can go really big, really small, and you can even do negative values. And if I do a negative value, uh, negative five pixels, and then I could come on here and say that it's white, well, then you get this little inset thing going on. Huh, isn't that cool? And you can create some cool stuff like this. And it's not only on buttons. You can use this for some really cool things. Uh, before we get there, just a really quick recap. Um, up until now, we've seen that one of the differences is that borders are part of the box model, whereas outlines are not, so they don't actually influence layout. And that means you can use it in some interesting ways and use either bigger ones or use the offsets and it won't cause any problems. Uh, you can control the individual sides of a border where you can't do that with an outline. Outline is all or nothing. Border, you, you can choose one, you can choose two, you can do all of them, but they're all different from one another, so that's kind of cool. Uh, another thing is border radius does not work on outlines, which absolutely sucks, but they have our offset here, which is absolutely amazing. Um, so what I'm gonna do is actually turn off these buttons just to look at an example of when you might want to use this on a different type of situation. So you might have a nice cool picture uh, that you have, you're have you using for something. And on that picture, let's just choose it here. I'll just come in and say image, and we can do an outline on here. So outline, three pixels, solid lime. And then you get that, and well, it doesn't look super great, does it? Uh, but then you can come in and say that you have an outline offset. And on my outline offset, I could do something like, say 1M going outward, and then it's gonna expand out. That's gonna be kind of big, but you can sort of create this framed effect super, super easily. Um, or maybe like a 0.5 could be a little bit better on that. So something like that, but you get like, a, you can create a frame around your image where you get the white border all the time. And even, you know, I'm saying line, but obviously this could be black or something else that goes with your design. Um, so I think that's really cool. Or just like we saw before, you can come in with a negative value and suck it in on top of your image. And I think this is just super neat. You can do this on images and stuff like that, um, which, you know, things like this, having to do like a pseudo element um, or something else sometimes with absolute positioning and trying to play around with it. So it's positioned properly and then trying to get the border on it and you're, have a whole bunch of code going on you could just you could just do this <laughs> it's super easy and super fun um, and i think you can do cool stuff with that now one thing I, I think i know that you're going to be asking seeing this is can i do multiple outlines no you can only have one so you, you have to use it in an interesting way but it would be pretty cool if you could have like four outlines or one on the inside and one on the outside or something but alas it is what we have but i think that is really cool and a really nice use case for it is on images or if you have like a 
a black div and then you have this outline that's like offset from it that's in your accent color or something it just opens up a lot of design possibilities now as an i didn't talk about this in this video but as an added bonus outline offset is an animatable property which is really fun if you'd like to see me make a video on looking at some of the fun effects that we can do with that leave a comment down below and let me know about that if enough people want it i'm going to take a look into that in the not too distant future and with that i just want to say a big thank you for watching a massive thank you to my patrons who help support what i do here on this channel each and every month and of course until next time don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome